This 1,330-foot-long structure winds across the land and depicts a coiled snake eating what appears to be an egg. It is the largest effigy mound in the world. And curiously, unlike most Native American mounds, the Great Serpent Mound was not constructed for burials. Serpent Mound had no burials. It's one of those mysterious mounds that that offered us no clue as to who the builders were. But on the property, there were burial mounds dated from about very early Adena period, nearly 3,000 years ago. Another curious aspect of Serpent Mound is where the ancient Native Americans chose to build it, on the outside swell of a five-mile-wide meteor crater. 300 million years ago, a meteor came into this area and struck the Earth going about 50,000 miles an hour. The Serpent Mound is built right on the very edge of the crater. And there's magnetic anomalies and faults that go across the Serpent Mound and that the Native Americans could douse them and they could feel the positive energy that's coming out of the ground. If you bring a compass to the Great Serpent Mound, there's certain spots where the compass needle just keeps going. So obviously, we have some weird magnetic fields there and also some gravitational anomalies. The myth has it that the Native Americans, when they came here, could see birds similar to passenger pigeons or homing pigeons circling by the millions because within the skull of the pigeon is a little piece of hematite or magnetite, and that's how they navigate and they couldn't figure out where north was. Can you imagine millions of birds flying in a circle five miles wide? In addition to creating magnetic anomalies, the meteor also deposited a number of elements not indigenous to the area, including one of the rarest elements on Earth, iridium. When we look at the location of the Serpent Mount, we find not only that there is iron, that there is uranium, but also iridium. Iridium can withstand temperatures up to 2,000 Celsius. It is non-corrosive, and it's actually been used in unmanned spacecraft. A lot of iridium apparently comes from outer space rather than being found on the Earth. There is a use of iridium for thermoelectric circuits. These deep space probes include actually a radioactive source because it's the only thing that can provide enough power when you're out beyond Jupiter and there's no sunlight and there's no nothing. We have iron, iridium and uranium, three substances which definitely should not be considered to be of any use to Native Americans. The question then is, to who are they of use?